Hey guys, Harry here, I'm back again with another Brit Lane vlog, and uh, we're back at another garage. It's same shit, different day it seems, on this uh, YouTube channel, but um, yeah, it's always fucking lovely, lovely work to do, lovely easy straight runs. Straight wall Harry I've been called before, you know, uh, yeah, as the name goes, nice, lovely straight runs. Uh, Zero windows, zero cavities. When we're living a when we're living a no cavity life, it's a stress free life. Anyway, um, today got some footage. Uh, we're about one and a half days into this, uh, probably one and a half short days as well uh, into this garage. Uh, I'll have it finished tomorrow. Um, on this particular garage, I managed to uh, build it to about twenty two courses high, which I like to do. Um, my main aim is to leave seven courses on the top because a garage wall plate height is 29 course, so it leaves you seven courses. Seven sevens are 49, so it's 490, seven fives, 35. 500, that leaves you 525 bricks, a few blocks, and the wall plate to bed on. That's a nice day's work for anyone uh, or myself if I'm squaring it around to wall plate. Uh, left on a garage and uh nice day's work and then it's you know uh, some some sites uh, they like to uh, get the trad deck in before then and put it at 1.5 meters high but it depends what firm you're with and what the trad deck uh, company allows some don't have 1.5 meter feet uh, some only have 1.8 and 2.1 so anyways you can see uh the way i built this garage today i'm back on the profile life as usual um I was, you know, doing a little bit of a, a spell by just do building corners, but I've just gone back to profiles. Uh, just for the pure reason, I've got quicker at setting them up uh, in recent times. I always, you know, I went off profiles for a little while. I was building corners and little corners running in, little corners running in. And then now I've gone back to building a little corner running in, then, then profile on, and then do, you know, like 10, 15 course off the profile. Um, Main reason, because I've just got used to setting them up and how to get them solid and uh, like luckily uh, if I build like a six or eight course corner, normally like a six, six or seven course corner, I can get the profile and I make sure it's bang on plumb. I don't have to wedge anything behind the profile that way. Like before when I'm trying to put a profile straight off the, uh, straight off what the ground workers have done, you know, it is fucking three course and it's running a mile out, out of plumb. So. Um, I, to be honest, I don't even blame the ground workers, to be honest, because sometimes it, be, it can be when they've uh, they've built the garage slab, uh, built, well, built the garage footing and then they've poured it, you know, the day after. And a lot of firms use ready mix for the uh, for the ground works. But, you know, it can be just, you know, you know, uh, just rough work, like. But um, on this on this particular garage, uh, I was, I, it was, you know, a little bit of it was tanked then, uh, and it didn't have any, uh, the ground was really high on this one, which was nice. So to be honest, I prefer it when the ground's like, you know, it was, there was only like one brick showing out of the ground, which I prefer to be honest. I know it's a bit of a nosebleed for the first five, six course, but I prefer to build a nice six course corner at each side. This is what I like to in winter, uh, especially when the bricks are wet, you know, a nice little six course corner, run them all in. I said this a lot a few videos ago, and then uh, the profile's on, and that six course corner, you make sure you get it bang on, and you slide your aluminiums on, and it's chucking, there's no fucking putting, putting trial behind it, it's bang on, you know, and uh, it just sets you, it sets a nice base up for the garage. Um, today, uh, in particular, which was notable, is, which I want to sort of make this whole video about, is sort of quality of the mortar, and we're on silo mix, it's tarmac. Some of the older type silos with a big fucking cylindrical drum that you can't take off. Uh, you can only take the front of it, the little front head of it, head of it off. It's like the old style. Uh, and the mortar that you get from these silos can be fucking really varied to each day, and it can make a difference to how much more, uh, how much water you put uh, in the mix. So if you put like, a, if you turn the tap up and have it coming out too sloppy, it can make it so it goes off too quick. And then sometimes. If you get it too stiff, it can just have no life in it whatsoever. So it's just getting that sweet spot, finally silos, where you're just getting just the right amount of water in it to where it's not, 
it don't go off super quick and it still has life in it so you know i got the second the first tub i got today uh was i used about one and a half tubs today which was a decent day um considering we were on uh like a bit of a double you know double sided pointing and it was dry as well these bricks are super dry all the time uh they do get wet quick if you leave them out but this sort of weather with the temperatures being just a higher average the bricks are super dry and the mortar you know it, it was it was like fucking clay this morning it was horrible so i was struggling to get them down this morning and then in the afternoon it was a bit better you know that i get I got a bit of a fresh tub but then i got diverted for about an hour or so uh, to to replace this special brick on this on this front door but you know how it is when you're placing something on the reveal of the front door the fucking bottom brick tries to come off the top brick above it tries to come off i had my cutter but it was right a fucking nightmare so I did that, and then that set me back an hour and a half or so. And uh, you know, by the time you find the thing is, you forget when you get asked to do a little bit of a bit of a job or a bit of a, you know a bit of a patching job or something or like an, an emergency fucking brick replacement. You forget you got to go find the brick, then you've got to go to get the right fucking tools out the car which you weren't using, and then find and then find where it is which is not the other end of the job, and then. Then take then chip the then fucking slice the brick out of the cutter or so and then by the time you got it out you gotta lay it again and then you you're fucking fighting against the fucking bricks above and below trying to fucking fall off so it fucks you down a little bit so I lost a bit of time today which uh, I wasn't too bothered about because uh, I was just I was re- I, to be honest after this morning I worked all the way through from like uh, at eight thirty when we. Got there about 8.30. I've been getting there about 8.30 regular now. And then... Uh, and then... Then basically after I got there at 8.30, I got a nice tub. Tub with, tub placement today were all right. I got a nice strategic tub placement uh, on this garage, which sometimes isn't always possible. Sometimes you can't reach right next to where you're working. And then, you know, I laid away all the way till 1 o'clock because my old man, he goes for two snaps a day regularly. Um, I say t- I tell him to have as many as he wants, but he normally just has, has one, and then sometimes has two. He had two today, so he went at like half ten for a snap, and I carried on through till about half twelve, quarter to one, and then we uh, finished the tub off that we had because it was just I had to knock it up. I had to put like a half a bucket of water in it after about half an hour of getting it, so it was just too fucking stiff. I don't know what went on with silo. It was just fucking. I ended up chatting to someone, then I got fucking distracted, getting asked to do this job, and fucking gobble were coming out like fucking bell metal. So, you know, there's always little things that can slow you down, and definitely the gobble is one of the biggest things that can slow you down in a day if getting them down. Like, it doesn't look like it here, but you know, I'm I'm at, I'm probably actively scraping the brick about to a about a good two times more than I should have been with the just the way the mortar was fucking just trying to press these bricks down is a fucking nightmare. Like, I pray for rain some days, like, I pray for rain to fucking piss, piss all of the bricks, get them nice and wet, because these bricks are a nightmare when they're fucking bone dry, uh, you know, don't matter how little gobble you put on them, you're just pressing and pressing, and you can't, and you know, I'm, I've been, I've been trying to, uh, I end up tapping them, you see me using the, the heel of my trowel, you know, my handle, I end up getting to the point where I'm just tapping every brick down, because it was just so stiff and horrible, and they're just the fucking... That's the only thing with these bricks, you know, I can get them down pretty easily on on the right days, you know, I get a PB with this type of brick. Uh, but on that particular day, the bricks were wet. The bricks were, like, damp and fucking... But, and, you, and the gobble were, like, piss as well. Which today, the gobble wasn't, like, piss. It just wouldn't... It's like it has two modes. It has, like, fucking, fucking stiff, stiff, awkward fucking gobble. And then it has, like piss unusable gobble it's weird it has like you can't get it in between to where it's like pretty wet but still usable you know what i mean so i'm gonna try tomorrow um i've got all bricks set up i shouldn't have really covered them but i covered them just out of thinking that maybe a fucking tsunami at its site and <laughs> wreck me bricks but i always cover the bricks because i think i suppose you can fucking you can put water in but you can't take water out the old saying but uh yeah, I did that. Cover, you know, I covered them up. Which, fucking, if it rains tonight, you know, the bricks are been nice and, you know, moist. But I don't know. I'm gonna experiment a bit more with it, you know, because if I can get my bricks just a little bit wetter, 
it just makes the build so much easier. So this is like sometimes why win brick lane in winter is I've got more done some days than I do in summer. Obviously on average you don't get as much done because you obviously you're not you're not working as long. And you're not fucking you know, the days are darker, it's dark by half three, four o'clock. And obviously on a morning you're losing an hour or two. Sometimes you're not starting well ten o'clock on most days, you know, because it's frost. And uh, you know, you're getting rained off regularly, so but it's um it's one of them things, you know what I mean? Sometimes in summer it can be a ball ache, but you know, I got about six and a half hundred bricks down today. Um and just a nice average day, you know what I mean? I aim for six hundred most days. If you can lay six hundred bricks, I'm you know, I'm happy as Larry. Uh so that's that's what I aim for most days. Uh if I get if I get into sevens and eights, you know, it's a fucking it's been a it's been a screamer. But uh I uh that's what I sort of get down most days. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm like on a solid day when I don't get interrupted, which is fucking rare. You know, I'm getting, a, you know, averaging like a 700, 700 bricks a day, which is nice to be fair. I'm the right, I'm the right sort of type of work. Obviously, if you're building back of a pair of houses, you're not going to lay 700 bricks. But then you lay it, and then you want gables, and then you, you know, you'll smash it in on gables, and you get to the back, and then all pillars. All halves, you've got to fucking, you know, you've got to find and put profiles up the fucking windows, you know. It's all a bit of a ball ache, so this is why, to be honest, I'm, uh, I'm fucking counting me, thank you, Milky Stars, for all these, uh, for all these walls and garages. I've got another wall to go on right next to this garage as well, so I seem to be on this site, particularly, as you can see, I'm right up the groundwork as arse here. Uh, I seem to be getting all the walls and garages on this, on this site, uh, which, Obviously, it's nice. It's nice to do, uh, but people forget you've got to top them off, which is my, which is the video before this. You saw me topping a wall off. It only took me like a day and a half uh, to do uh, because they had like big concrete, uh, big concrete copings, pre, pre, you know, preformed things, like proper, you know, modern looking things. But but when it's tar brick on edge, you know what I mean. It can really fucking wreck your money for for the week. But luckily, I'm. I'm pretty good at doing that tower brick on edge, you know, I've always made money topping walls off um, over the years. It just took me fucking loads and loads of time doing them. When I first started doing tower brick on edge, I was earning like 120 quid a day. But then I got to a point where I could fucking earn 220 and I think I've done it, I've earned about 300 quid in a day doing tower brick on edge, you know, in the right, right setup, which, you know what I mean? Most gangs, they go on tower brick on edge and it's basically, they're basically working for free for a couple of days, you know what I mean, with the amount of fucking bricks they lay. So it's one of them things, you know what I mean, the more you do it, the better you'll get. And uh, which the thing is, that what I like about these walls and garages as well, uh, is, you know, you're laying bricks, you're laying brick, brick after brick, and the quicker you do it, the quicker you get laying a single brick. You can go on to any type of work, and you know what I mean, you'll just get it up quicker. No matter what you're doing, you can put trowel to wall, Trial to gobbo, gobbo to wall, brick to wall, and the, and the faster you get doing it and repeating the same process, uh, you know, you're just going to get faster in general, more accurate, neater. That's one thing that I'm always putting, I'm putting, uh, you know, adjacent with my speed is neatness. Like my old man said today, you know, he's my biggest fucking critic. He's always fucking, he pointed out the first few courses I were doing in this garage when I set off. I were, you know, I would just fucking stood up straight, using my, my new little wooden tables I've made. And I won't like looking at the wall and I had a couple of chicken dippers, you know, a few speed boats in the lower down. And he was like, those bricks are fucking all stepping up, six of them, he said. And I said, all right, you know, fucking all right, yeah, come on, roll in my eyes a bit. And they were right, like, and then I just fucking fixed it. And I don't think I did it again. Didn't do any more speed boats, but it's one thing I'm just mindful of is, you know, keeping quality and increasing the quality over the time. And then after, after the end of the today, um, where this film, this, this clip was, these clips were filmed. I think I've got about two or three, two or three videos out of this fucking first day. That's why I'm trying to elongate into 20 minutes. But he said, like, he said to me, so this was probably one of the neatest garages we've done. And and to be fair, you know what I mean. We have we have been increasing the quality and the neatness of the work as time goes on, which which you know is. What when people see me doing site work is it is it well, obviously all my channel is is people think when they think site work they think rough and it's not always that way if you keep yourself to a higher standard and you keep yourself in check you can get faster and neater you know you the the thing that that winds me up a little bit with 
you know, bricklayers on YouTube and stuff like that. A lot of the guys are dead neat, right? They're dead neat, but they don't talk about keeping, your, you know, increasing speed and keeping your neatness. It's a rare thing. There's, there's, you know, like I say, I can't fault any bricklaying, any brick, brick work you see on YouTube. It's fucking all spot on. Because why would you put shit work on? But there's, there's one thing that people don't emphasise is, is keeping the speed and the neatness, you know, in tandem. You know what I mean? You need to keep your check. And like I say, we all know, there's always, we all know a fucking bricklayer who's fucking light lining, but the work's rough as fuck. And they get away with it because they're so quick. And because they keep the fucking, you know, they earn the firm loads of money because they're fucking booking in two or three thousand quid a week or whatever they're booking in. They're fucking light lining, but it's bish bash bosh slapping it up and but and you think oh well if you've got you if you've got to be fast you've got to be rough which you don't have to be if you just keep your son in check year after year month after month <coughs> thousand brick after thousand brick you lay you get to hundreds to hundreds of thousands to millions of bricks and you get to a point where you can lay fast and neat all the time and a lot of the time it's not about agonizing over if if a bit of work's absolutely perfect, it's getting it to that 90%, but it's still, it's keeping getting it to that 90%, that 95%, that 96%, you know what I mean? Even if you're increasing by a percent of time, you might go down a few percent, a few percentages on some sorts, some types of work, depending on, you know, uh, you know, depending on the conditions that can make your work look different, depending on the, if the bricks are wet or whatever. If you, if you can just focus on you know, increasing those percentages 1% at a time on, you know, on the level of your work, you know, neatness and speed, you can, you can, I'm convinced anyway, I don't, I haven't seen it yet, but you can become an incredibly neat and fast bricklayer with just keeping your scent to a high strict standard, you know, by just, you know, increasing efficiency, you know, I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen bricklayers who are you know, dead fast, but you can see they're just relying on the speed of the laying bricks. They're not actually mega efficient, but obviously it's what it's what suits yourself. Obviously, that makes you fast. If you you know, it, we all suit different methods, but if you can combine that efficiency and speed and neatness uh, to a point where you're not obviously you're not exploiting anyone, you're just doing it all yourself. It's it, you can get to a point where you can get tons done in a day without you know without sacrificing all these you know all these stereotypes which you, which which people are quick or, or fast get so you know me myself you know every day i'm getting a bit faster getting a bit neater and it can all it can all depend on varying factors you know what i mean and anyone who's watching who's trying to increase get you know, get faster even or even pick up the pick and dip for the first time you know i recommend just you know just be mindful be mindful keep at it it's not going to go well every day. You're not going to lay a lot of bricks every day, but fucking your, your average will go up over time, over, you know, a month or two of, you know, of, of, you know, of, of trying more efficient methods, whether that's a more efficient version of traditional or more efficient way of pick and dip. You know, if you're mindful and you're trying learning, you watch as well. Watching videos is massive. You know what I mean? I've watched, I watch other YouTubers. I, to be honest, I don't watch that much bricklaying content on YouTube, but I watch enough to where I get little ideas, I get mindful of what people are doing and uh, you know, I've even I've even contemplated with this pick and dip, I've even contemplated going for a bigger trowel. I've even thought, hmm, maybe could we maybe in winter could I get a fucking eleven inch trowel and start long spreading seriously. Long spread pick and dipping seriously for some mega speed, but it's just all things you've got to try different methods, you've got to you've got to, you know, contem you've got to be you know, open-minded to new ways of working to be able to just, you know, progress in your craft, you know what I mean? Because I think this is a lot, you know, that obviously people watching these videos are interested in bricklaying, they're, you know, they're, you know, they're somewhat, they must enjoy it for that, for that much to watch videos on it. So if you're, you know, if you're about improving and about making yourself better, you know, over time, no matter how old you are, how long you've been doing it, there's always things you can do to improve which can, at the end of the day, they can make your fucking life easier more than anything. This is why this pick and dip to me has been like a, it's been like a game changer, because the the effort to fucking output ratio has been off the charts, and it's 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 higher. It seems higher, and it seems more, you know, more fucking 
astonishing when it's actually happening in real life and not just on a YouTube video and just not someone saying it's faster. When you're seeing the results, you're seeing the fucking the booking in numbers, you're seeing the amount of bricks you're laying, it's just it's just something to you know be mindful of. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video on mortar and you know improvements in and I'll be back you know, with another video tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Hit subscribe if you want to see daily Britlane content and I will see you in the next one.